behind. There are, what did he say, man of war jellyfish down. Uh, Portuguese man of war Portuguese jellyfish. man of war yeah. jellyfish uh, on the east side of Guam. So please be aware of that and stay out of the water. We're going to have more on the link after the break. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. Today, I'm Peter Santos. And I'm Tyler Matinani. Celebrate the holidays with KUAM. Join us on Christmas Eve for KUAM's Christmas Wish with the Guam Department of Education's gifted and talented education program. Don't miss the show scheduled for 6.30 p.m. on December 24th on KUAM TV 8 and streaming live on Facebook. Then on Christmas night, we continue our celebration with a virtual dance experience in partnership with the Guam Allied Dance Force. We're partnering to raise money for the Salvation Army's Red Kettle Campaign. That's 6.30 p.m. on Christmas evening only on KUM TV 8. It's going to be a great celebration of Christmas with music and dance, and we hope to see you there. Merry Christmas, everyone. It takes all of us to protect Guam. Join the Guam Visitors Bureau in our social media campaign series aimed to protect our island and each other in this COVID-19 era. Participate in the Protect Guam movement by wearing your mask, showcasing Guam's heroes, staying active, and downloading the Guam COVID Alert app. Post and share your content with us. Use the hashtag Protect Guam and you could win $100. It's that simple. Check out visitguam.com for details. Let's reclaim our lives, our economy, and our tourism industry. Catch the holiday soundtrack starting December 1st through January 5th. You'll be treated to an all-day festive playlist only on Breeze 93.9 FM. Also streaming on KUAM.com and the KUAM mobile app. Let's spread joy and holiday cheer this season. Holiday soundtrack is brought to you by Domino's. Visit Domino's.gu for faster, easier online ordering. Today, I'm Senior Airman Drew Santos, assigned to the 254 Security Forces Squadron, Guam Air National Guard. Currently detached to the 380 SFS squadron, and uh, I just want to wish my family and friends back home a very Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and a Happy Holidays. Be safe. These special season's greetings from our troops is brought to you locally by McDonald's of Guam and KUAM Communications. In the spirit of the Christmas season, enjoy the presentation of Noben and Nino starting December 24th through January 1st, 2021, airing at 5.30 p.m. on KUAM TV 8 and again at 6.30 p.m. on KUAM TV 11. Presented by Addis Trust and Investment. Location, service, trust. If you plan on leaving your house, don't forget your face mask. Along with hand washing and social distancing, wearing face masks can drastically reduce your risk of infection. Many people who catch COVID-19 can be contagious before they even start showing symptoms. The more people who use face masks, the less the virus can be transmitted and fewer individuals are exposed. When we both wear face masks, I protect you, you protect me, and we are both safe. These are some of the signs that someone is thinking about suicide, talking about wanting to die, excessive guilt or shame, and feeling like a burden to others, feeling empty, hopeless, trapped, or having no reason to live, feeling extremely sad, anxious, agitated, or full of rage with unbearable emotional or physical pain, 
Other signs include changing behavior, such as making a plan or researching ways to die, withdrawing from friends or saying goodbye, giving away important items or making a will, taking dangerous risks such as driving extremely fast, displaying extreme mood swings, eating or sleeping more or less, and using drugs or alcohol more often. If you or someone you know is showing these warning signs, get help as soon as possible. Call Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center's Crisis Hotline at 647-8833 or 4. We got your six. At 6 a.m. with the link on Breeze 93.9 FM. Bree and I connect you with all the latest news and information you need things? to know to start your day. Then check back with Guam's news leader at 6 p.m. for the day's top headlines with KUAM News Prime Time. From 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and everything else in between with KUAM Digital, we got your six. From the top of the hour, we're at KUAM FM in Agatha, Guam. This is a Breeze 93.9 FM. We're back another hour of the show. It's the link. Remember, the show probably brought to you by Calvo Enterprises and ITD. We're back with your host, the Brand Sauce, Matt Tanani. Good morning. Hoffit, everybody. Good morning. Uh, our very first uh, guest joining us from the Zoom room uh, is Congressman uh, from the CNMI, Gregorio Kalili Sablon. Good morning, Congressman. Thank you so much for taking the time and waking up with us here on the link. How are Thank you? Thank you for having me. Yeah. How was your holiday? It was, it was good, of course. Um, you know, it's different. Um, we didn't have family gatherings. Uh, we did not have the babies to come visit us at home. But we had Christmas Eve mass and... Uh, and it was good, different, but it's still we're still blessed. Right. You know, we were talking uh, in the in the break, and I understand that you've joined the vaccination. Uh, I did uh, two days ago. Um, I joined uh, those who are sixty-five and older, and, uh, and and it was good because I was able to see others who were older, 
can be monopoly uh, age group uh, that were actually willing to take the vaccine. So those would be the people who who would have had second thoughts. Uh, I've had met people uh, prior to the day before yesterday who were having uh, second thoughts about taking the vaccine, and I would I, I encourage them that if you have the opportunity. If you get the opportunity to take the vaccine, I suggest you take it. And if two days ago, can you just kind of take us through the process on how, I guess, the clinics are going over there in, in the CNMI? Because we've got our, our clinics uh, uh, ramping back up today. Yeah, so um, I, I pre-registered. I went online and, and registered, uh, and that made it much easier for me. Uh, my time was supposed to be 8 o'clock. Of course, I showed up at seven, and there was already a line. So uh, I um, I lined up and was able to come in, uh, waiting for my chance to go to talk to this technician, this admin person who was asking for your registration number, asking for an ID number, build up your, and then of course you go straight in and get a vaccine. Uh, after that, I had to wait for 15 minutes in another room so that there are no reactions to the vaccine because I don't have any allergy that I'm aware of. Uh, others, for some people, they had to wait 30 minutes. But for me, it was 15 minutes. And then, um, thank you, goodbye. Um, <laughs> they didn't have juice or, you know, an apple, but I would have liked that. But uh, <laughs> I know. It. And, uh, I, I have no problems. There was no soreness, no, I, it's just like getting the flu shot, you know, a day after the shot, you don't feel it. Mm -hmm. So no, no side effects or anything. You're, you're good to go. Uh, other than uh, no apple or, or juice. No orange. Did you get no a orange. lollipop at least? A big pardon? <laughs> Did you get a lollipop? <laughs> no, no, and I prefer that I don't. Uh, well, you know, we wanted to bring you on just to get uh, caught up with uh, all the things that are happening in, in Congress. And, you know, we got the news last week that the NDAA was vetoed by the president. I, I don't even recall the last time I've, I've heard that where the yeah, president. You're too young. You're, you're too, too young. young. Well, right, because the NDAA has been enacted into law for 59 years straight. Uh, and this would be the first time in six years it's been vetoed. And I understand that Congress are coming in to, to vote tomorrow on the on the override. I understand that there's enough votes to uh, give President Trump his first override in his four years in office. And um, so they're gonna come in and vote. And I, I do hope that uh, enough members vote to override the president veto. There's just so many things. This is money for the military. I'm not exactly 100% pro, pro military, but there's so many good things here, including, um, you know, pay raises for our troops um, and, and things like that. Um, and I'm, I'm, yeah, um, so I hope they do override the president's veto. Yeah, I know for, for Guam, uh, there was a language regarding a new regional public health lab uh, and the foreign labor exemption uh, for civilian uh, construction. Right. So, right. Uh, yeah, I think uh, here local leaders were kind of uh, disappointed with the fact that that was uh, vetoed. Was there anything in particular for uh, the CNMI? Um, yeah, we've got like, a few, one or two issues that languages in there. We would also benefit from those the H2 provision that our Congressman Henry Plus uh, worked on. Um, and, and we do have, uh, I think, one or two issues in there, I mean, uh, matters in there that we inserted. The, you know, the NDA having such a great record of passing and being enacting into law for 59 years has become a, many members try to get this stuff, their, their items each, um, attached to it as riders and uh, if it's germane, yeah, it gets uh, included. So um, it makes it sweet for every member has a reason to vote for it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all waiting to see what uh, the president is going to do with the uh, $900 billion 
COVID relief uh, bill, and I think he's on holiday somewhere, maybe in Florida or, or wherever it is. But what are you, what are you tracking? What are you hearing uh, that he he might do? That he would just make it difficult for Congress and for the incoming administration and keep himself relevant at this last few days he is in office. This, um, his, um, look, if he's going to veto it, he should veto it. Um, if he's going, I think he's going to pocket veto it, he's going to let it lapse into the 117th Congress, and then that means that uh, the bill is ineffective as fast and Congress has to go back to the drawing table, which is, man, this is probably the most intense negotiations I've seen in uh, my 12 years in Congress. It's just been a, and look, I've, I've pissed off leadership myself, my, <laughs> my caucus leadership because of, you know, my continuing to follow up on the issues that were important and necessary for the Marianas. And, and despite, you know, that I was told, yeah, well, there are, do I see the text, legislative text? I don't really believe too much. I've had missed opportunities in the past where I believe what is the film. And so, you know, I continue to bring up issues. Um, and um, so much is riding on this, so much negotiation is riding on this. And if the president had really wanted to give the $2,000 in the beginning, he should have been more vocal. He should have been more active. He should have been more involved in the negotiations. Uh, to do this now to Secretary Mnuchin is another slap in the face for his Secretary of the Treasury, who has been his con man in Congress all this time. It's a slap in the face to um, Mitch McConnell himself in the Senate, who has been, you know, his go to laptop. Um. So is that mainly it, the, the, the issue with uh, the, the stimulus uh, payments uh, with the $600 that were, was included in the bill versus what he wants is uh, $2,000? Um, was there anything else uh, that he was uh, concerned about with this, with this bill? Uh, I was reading somewhere that he had instructed Congress to get rid of uh, pork in the bill. Do you know what uh, maybe he was referring to? Right. Well, you know, the, the things we make call pork, uh, you know, he brought up an issue about funding for the Kennedy Center. Those are in the omnibus. Those, those are omnibus bills that are there year in year. They are actually, they were actually included in his own budget submission to Congress. Mm -hmm. And uh, now he's calling them that, you know, these are reasons the pork, uh, spending money to, you know, through the State Department, sending money to foreign countries and things like that. These are items that were in his own budget submission. But because this is how the past our president has been uh, in, pertaining to our government, the national government uh, has been for years. He's now mixing uh, oranges and apples. He's been talking about the COVID and bringing up items that are in the omnibus when the two bills were put together for a reason that there's no appetite. I mean, there's more chances of members voting when the two bills are put together. Look, um, I we may have to shut down. Uh, I Tomorrow, I understand the House may also bring up um, a continuing resolution. I don't know. Um, you know, a, a shutdown to our federal government is one of the last things we want. Uh, it, it hurts agencies. It, it actually hurts people. And getting the government started again after shutdown costs money uh, from what we learned from our previous shutdown and the security of people um, from Mr. Trump again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And PUA, it just, uh, the you can no longer uh, apply for the pandemic unemployment assistance program. The deadline was yesterday. We don't have a uh, COVID relief um, package. And you said that the, it's possible that if the president l lets this lapse, we wouldn't, it would mean that we wouldn't have any sort of uh, federal assistance, I guess, for, for how long until the new Congress is, is sworn in? 
Yes, until the new Congress is sworn in and, and negotiates another package. Uh, and a lot of, you know, we've always said, but on this one, I think it's rather very true. A lot of it is riding on this Georgia race. Um, because, yeah, Congress can sit down and, and negotiate. Mr. Trump no longer in, in for example, he, he'll be out of office on the 20th and be a Biden administration. But it will still be very difficult negotiating with a, a Republican Senate. Uh, there will be no longer a demand from the president for a $2,000 uh, uh, economic impact uh, uh, payment or stimulus as we call them. Um, and so who knows what Mr. McConnell would ask. He would be probably just say on $500, who knows? That's what it, or $300, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. That's what he's um, in the past suggested. So it'd be, it's a lot of mixed messages. I have, I really cannot predict exactly what will happen, but there will be another negotiation. The Biden, President-elect Biden has said that there will be a major economic, I mean, uh, COVID package uh, in his administration, early in his administration. So, yeah, uh, look, one of the things on that, that I know is important to both Guam and the Marianas, for example, is in Hawaii, and this has been driven, this has been many years in negotiation, uh, is the uh, eligibility of our COPA uh, citizens in Medicaid. Um, mm -hmm. And um, this has been many years, my only condition there, the language I include and inserted, and even if it was only for the Marianas, but it's now come, become for all the territories, is that the governors have, have to opt in to make this program eligible in their territory. Because uh, for the Northern Marianas, we get $60 million of Medicaid money. We have to provide the match, and we have our own citizens uh, to worry about. And so uh, adding, say, 3,000 uh, of our my Micronesian brothers and sisters to Medicaid could become a problem. Uh, so it's up to the governor here to determine the, you know, the pros and cons and then decide to opt in or opt out of, of this program for COPA citizens. But for Guam, my goodness, just imagine, um, you know, it depends again on how much Medicaid money you receive and you have a large of a population on Guam, mm -hmm. uh, and, and even for Hawaii, for example, they have a large uh, migration of population, and uh, Hawaii matches 50 cents for every dollar of uh, uh, spent on Medicaid, so it still costs a lot of money, but it still at least gives them 50 cents more than what they are, what they have now. But for us, uh, the matching, you know, do we have the matching? Do we have enough money to cover them? Uh, that would be left to the governor on a year-to-year -year basis. What, why was uh, the eligibility removed uh, in, in, I guess, is it 96? Yeah, it was, I understand it was in 19. There was a poverty uh, or welfare. Um, Reform Act? Yeah, welfare reform act and uh, that was in um, 1966. I mean, I'm sorry, 1996, uh, where that legislation reverses a long-standing injustice against citizens uh, of the freely associated states living in the United States uh, because their eligibility for Medicaid, which was promised in the original contract negotiation, was taken away by this uh, welfare reform act in 19. Uh, 96. So uh, yes, uh, they used to be eligible and then they were taken out and uh, now we're trying to bring in eligibility. Um, it was an issue since I first got into Congress. Uh, Senator Hirono continued working on it and finally was able to get it included in this uh, act. Uh, the other issue that are still a really major stumbling block uh, for many members of Congress uh, who have both a population to uh, compact impact money, you know, that $30 million is never enough for no one. Uh, and uh, Congressman Case, for example, Hawaii is adamant that he, 
we cannot support uh, the, the financial um, uh, COFA packets that are due next year uh, mm -hmm. for uh, FAS and the Marshall Islands, and of course, for the uh, Palau and the year after, uh, which, by the way, negotiation has not uh, started well, and I understand there's been no real negotiation going on, so it would have to be the Biden administration that carries that forward, and it is something that I have asked that it be placed as a priority in the Biden administration, and that uh, it doesn't wait for another year or two before they start working on it. Mm -hmm. Well, as we look ahead to the new term, uh, uh, obviously, you know, priority number one is uh, COVID relief. But what are some of the other initiatives uh, that you're working on looking forward? Yeah, um, look, um, we, we don't have SNAP in the mm. and, uh, and I, I really believe that most people who are on this food assistance program are there are in there because they need it. Of course, I think there are some in there who don't deserve the program and should be kicked out. Uh, but for the most part, people, and I don't think people line up, for example, to sign up for this program and have a sense of pride for doing it. Uh, I have a, a great belief in, you know, people have pride. But when there's a need, there has to be, uh, it has to be addressed and it has to be addressed uh, appropriately measured. And so SNAP for the Northern Marianas is an issue, uh, something I'm working on. And, and Medicaid for that same matter, uh, Medicaid for, for um, the Marianas, for the territories, uh, American Samoa, Guam, for example. The problem with Medicaid is Puerto Rico is in the middle of the tent. And, and that's a large elephant, and the cost of getting Puerto Rico into the full Medicaid program is just larger than almost half of the state. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a major cost, so that's been a stumbling block. And in Congress, although we have been successful in some parts on getting through on some matters uh, of standalone bills for our district, um, many times it, it is address as look, this is a territory issue and until we can address all the territories in it, uh, it's, you're spending political capital on something that really doesn't have a good chance of becoming law. Uh, but those two items are very important to me. Um, I was able to get my FAFSA bill included in this COVID legislation, which uh, makes uh, FAFSA uh, an application for FAFSA actually reduced by half and makes it available in several languages um, um, and also mm -hmm. increase of Pell Grants. Uh, that's very important because when in my first term, we were able to increase Pell Grants up to the uh, present level that we're in now. But this uh, the new, the COVID also increased Pell Grants again. Uh, and for many students here in the Marianas, Pell Grants, pay for the cost of tuition, books, fees, and, and leave a little loose change in the students' uh, pockets or, or other expenses associated with school. So my my whole, my top priority in Congress is to provide us many opportunities to educate and train our people in the Mariana. This best investment, I think, is investing in our people. And I have kept true to that agenda. That's our uh, top priority for 12 years. I'm the only delegate who's a member of Head on Labor for the entire 12 years. You know, it's, it's not a fancy committee. It's not <laughs> an exclusive committee. It's called the desert in, ter in, in terms of fundraising, the mm -hmm. desert. But um, it's been, it's been um, rewarding for me because I've been able to help those of our, in our in territories, basically. Uh, improve their educational system, get more money for their teachers and, and things like that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing, uh, we, we, we spoke with uh, Congressman St. Nicholas uh, when he held a press conference, I think it was last week or so, um, uh, Nestor had asked him about uh, his thoughts on the uh, nomination of uh, New Mexico Congresswoman uh, Deb H H Holland for Secretary of the Interior. And I wanted to get uh, your thoughts on her nomination. 
Yeah, well, well it's historic. Um, Congresswoman Holland Depp is a smart lady. She's, uh, she's a member of natural resources. And, uh, and uh, it, it, it'll be the first Native American uh, cabinet member of the cabinet. So it's historic and much more so Deb has been a, an activist on, on the issues facing Native Americans. And so she has her, she, she comes to the job uh, well prepared for the task she faces in climate justice uh, issues, uh, which is important to us here as well. And um, so it'd be amazing to see her. Uh, we'll give her a little bit of space and then we'll bring our issues up to her, uh, knowing that she's, you know, a member of the community. And um, yeah, we'll just give her a little breathing room and then we'll, of course, I, in fact, I've already asked for a meeting with the Biden transition. It'll be on the first week of uh, when we get back to Congress. So we'll meet on territory issues. So I can invite each member of uh, the territories to bring up their packets who submitted to the Biden team, but we'll bring up one item that they would like to argue or to, you know, speak out on. And so we're looking at that in the first week um, as, um, as the most senior member from the territories and also a vice chairman of national resources for insular affairs. So yeah, we'll look forward to that. All right. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask was uh, the scene of my governor, he, had announced during a Rotary meeting here uh, on Guam virtually that uh, they plan on a partially reopening tourism in the CNMI. I, I want to say it's a it's, it's South Korea. What what are your thoughts on on that? We 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 do need to open up. Uh, the tourist industry, uh, the hospitality industry. I don't doubt that um, business is very slow here in Taipan. I see this on Guam when I pass through. I, for myself, I place the, the, the health of our community as a top priority above everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, just imagine this is the first time in my life where I didn't have the baby Jesus in our home. And that was the, the vision by the baby Jesus to me is, is something that is that just speaks as to what Christmas is all about to me. I, and I get on my knees and I generate and I say my prayers and you know give my thanks and ask for help and, and the whole but we have to accept that the baby Jesus couldn't visit us this year. And so, right, we cannot, I don't think, yet open a uh, tourism corridor, although they have this plan that they're going to, you know, uh, quarantine and say in South Korea, then quarantine here when they get here. Um, look, there are, are lists of, uh, Two days ago, there were two private jets parked at the airport, like an airport, and I understand one in Rota, of people who come in and were not quarantined. And they come from China. So yeah, they give breaks to their friends. And yet the rest of the people have to go through this whole quarantine process, which is, I think, necessary. Uh, so no, I, I'm not. I don't think we're ready to open up our community for tourists, but that's not my goal. That is the governor's goal, and, and he should be held responsible if anything breaks and does happen. We are blessed with 119 uh, known contractions here in the Marianas since all of this happened. We are God blessed. And I give credit to our public health agencies and officials, the frontliners, for all of their hard work because they do take a risk. But we, let's not test that blessing because we have to look at some of our friends who are in the tourist industry and all this. And, and I don't know if tourists in Korea are willing to travel here anyway with the spike there. Um, there's no guarantee that they will not be carriers of the virus. And, and until that's done, 
with herd immunity, I think we should all remain, the policy should remain the same. Okay, well, I think you made it clear, uh, your position <laughs> on th on that matter. When do you head out back to uh, Washington? Yeah, Saturday morning. Yeah, so I, well, I get to stop over and walk five hours, which is always good, just sitting down in the lounge or sometimes um, down in the costume area. But uh, no, I get to connect from Guam to Narita, then on to Chicago and DC. So I get to DC like nine, nine at night and we come in session. I understand at noon the next day. Well, busy, busy, busy. Well, we certainly thank you uh, for coming on the show. Uh, any final mm -hmm. message, I guess, to the people of the CNMI? Right. Well, uh, happy new year, uh, everyone. Um, thank you for all the support I, you've given me in this past uh, 12 years. I continue to ask you for your prayers. Uh, sometimes it's difficult in this job. I am, um, but uh, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful for everything, for all the support. And thank you, KM, for inviting me. Thank you. Anytime, uh, Congressman, you're welcome to come on the show. I'll be checking in with you. All right. Adios. Adios. Safe travels. And that was uh, Congressman uh, Gregorio Kalili Sablon, uh, the congressman for the CNMI. Uh, just so everybody knows, we have invited uh, Congressman Mike.